With our timestamps enabled and our passwords encrypted, now we're going to go into a little more detail as far as logging goes. And I'm always very upfront with you, very honest with you. I'm going to be just that right here and now. We are probably going to talk more about logging in the next half hour than you will talk about it in the next 10 years. And it's good information to have, but the thing with logging is that the defaults are so good that you rarely adjust them. Nothing wrong with adjusting them. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But the number one question, <laughs> I'm not even sure there is a number two. The number one question when it comes to logging, you go online, you just do a little search, logging Cisco, that kind of thing. People asking, I can't see my messages. You know, I, I'm connected, I'm connected this way. Maybe they don't even say how they're connected. But it's like, hey, I'm on a Cisco router and this should be on my default and I'm not seeing my messages, why not? I'm gonna show you a couple of real world scenarios that might not pop up on your exam, but they're gonna pop up in the real world because it does get a little confusing and a little frustrating if you can't get your console messages because frankly, you're just so used to them being there. Now, there are three main ways, as you can see on the screen right now, that we're going to access our log messages. We're going to look at all three ways. First, and that's the one we're starting with, and this is the one that we've really been doing throughout the course, is a direct connection via the console port. You might also be remotely connected through Telnet or SSH, or we may be sending the messages to a syslog server in addition, uh, and that is a separate device used to store the log messages, so you can go through them later. And when it comes to logging, really, you might want to tweak it a little bit. Again, it's, the defaults are so good. But you might have times when you want a little less information than the defaults give you. There may be times when you want a little more information. Maybe you want less information on the screen. Maybe you don't want any information on your screen. You just say, hey, I want to send it all to syslog server. I'm going to look at it later. I like to leave logging on at least so I can see messages about, you know, okay, yes, this interface went up. Yes, this interface went down. But, you know, you may, you may want to just send it all to a syslog server. Or maybe you want a very specific level of information to that server, but more general information on the screen. So I want to throw this at you right now, and I know you're going to hear it at least one more time. If you set up a syslog server and you were looking at messages on the screen, the levels of logging do not have to be the same. They're separate operations entirely. And here's just an example of some of the log messages that we've seen. And these console messages, I grabbed these off a of screen. And again, we are talking about console logging where I am connected directly to the device via the console port. That is on by default. And I'll skip a little ahead here, maybe myself, and sorry about that. And show you, first off, let me run show logging here. And give you the entire thing here from the top. And you see show logging is the command I ran. Not only is this your main logging show command, it's almost your only show logging command. This has a few options, but this really tells you everything you need to know. We've got syslog logging enabled at the top. Don't worry about active or inactive message discriminators right now. What we're really concerned with, frankly, is this information right here. And these are at the defaults. Console logging is what we're looking at right now. Notice it says level debugging. More detail about that in a moment. But we can see that it is on. Monitor logging, which is discussion, that's coming up. That is on as well. Notice we haven't logged any messages that way. And the level there is set at debugging as well. Buffer logging, we can log information to a buffer on the local device. And we're going to do that as well. But notice right now that's disabled and that's actually a default. Those are the three logging methods we're really concerned with right now. And again, console logging, everything's fine. It's at the default. If I do a shut and a no shut, I'm going to see a little message right there. There we go. See a couple of messages right there. And that's what we expect to see. Let's look at these messages, though, in just a little bit more detail. First, I want to give you this little helpful hint, though. I'm going to give you a great hint on these because sooner or later, you're going to run into some log messages you're not used to seeing, or more likely, you're going to run into debug messages that you haven't seen before. And if you need to tell Cisco or me or somebody else, hey, here's what these mean, just stay calm. If you haven't seen them yet, that's fine. And if you just take a look at this information right here, this will give you a huge hint, if not just tell you exactly what you're looking at. And that goes for debugs as well as for log messages, which is what we're looking at here. 
But here are three lines I grabbed from another router and, you know, configure from console by console. We've seen that a thousand times so far. And all I did was bring a serial interface up and that's it. But the messages are all a little bit different. And again, uh, console logging is on by default. So we've got that running. And, but let's look at the details here with a couple of these lines. Now, when I said link in the middle message, that's the one we're looking at. So we've got link three up down. Mostly self-explanatory, but what is that three all about? Well, the link refers to the source of the message or the facility, if you will, that created the message. That's a highfalutin big city way of saying it. Three refers to the severity level. Zero is the most urgent. Six is the least urgent of the non-user created messages, because this is going to sound odd. Zero is the most urgent, but debugging has a severity level of seven. Well, debugging is really created due to our input. We are asking for it, not asking for it, but we're asking for this information. We're saying debug IP packet, give me this info. Those messages are going to have a severity level, of, again, of seven. And zero is the most urgent. When you see zero, you got big problems. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But up, down, pretty self-explanatory. That gives you a very brief summary of the event where the rest of the message, interface serial 010, change state to up, really tells you what's going on. So again, looking at all three of those messages, the first part of it, sys, you know, it's a system message, link, there's a link message, line proto, obviously line protocol, that's what it's referring to. The end of that part of the message, config, up, down, up, down, again, self-explanatory. It's the severity numbers you need to be familiar with. And uh, frankly, it would not hurt you to memorize these for the exam, just being blunt. And again, you'll notice from zero to six here, we're looking at alert. And the official description is uh, system is down and or unusable. And the unofficial description, the Chris Bryant description that will not appear on your exam is this is very, very bad. We go up one numeric level one emergency means take immediate action. That is very bad. Critical, there's a critical event. You should pay attention and act accordingly. You're not going to see a ton of those, hopefully, uh, in real world networking. But again, zeros, ones, and twos, there's something very, very bad going on there. Now with three and four, that's like the next level. Actually, two, three, and four is the next level. Critical error and warning because the line between these can be pretty thin. And if you see errors two, three, and four, the numeric levels, the log message levels, two, three, and four, that's uh, pay attention and act accordingly, as far as I'm concerned. You need to pay attention to it. It doesn't mean the router is down or is gonna go down any second, but it is something you need to take charge of. What we have seen most of to this date is uh, five, sixes, and sevens. What did we have before? We had a five, a three, and a five. So that three is considered an error condition. That's interesting because that was actually just telling us that that was up, but error is the official uh, name for level three. And mostly what we've seen though are level fives. Normal significant condition. Okay, well, you know, that sounds like it could be good, and actually it is good. You know, you should take note of it, see what happened, but overall things are good. Informational, normal, informational only, it's just something you ought to know. And then seven again, that is due to our input. It's debug info created and prompted by user input. It's information we ask for, and as always, be careful with the CPU hit during a debug. You don't want to run big debugs, so to speak, like debug IP packet during a busy time in your network because the CPU hit can actually impact your routing operations. Now we're going to come back to the syslog server next, but I wanted to show you one more thing, and it's one of those real world situations we talked about with people who can't see their console messages. Now the command to enable our logging at this point, our console logging, is logging console. And let's take a look at our logging options here. Quite a few options here, and again, don't sweat most of them. But what we are interested right now in is logging console. So let's see what our options are here. And there are those severity levels. Now we have a couple of other messages in there. Uh, discriminator, filter, guaranteed, again, that's for future studies. Don't sweat it, XML, same boat. Notice here that the, they give you the level and the severity number. And if I enter something here, I can enter either the word, let's say that I was gonna put in alerts. 
if I want to put in alerts here, then I could put either the word alert or the number one because that's where it is. So what exactly am I doing there? What I'm doing there is filtering the level of messages I'll see at the console. I'm gonna go show you another quick video on that coming up next. But let's just say, I wanna stick with what we're doing there with, hey, I can't see my messages. Let's say that someone is just fooling around or you know, working, practicing their commands on a work router, which you should never do, and put in you know, no logging console. Well, that actually disables con the console messages. So right now, you know, someone could come back, you know, a week later, and they've got a blank screen. And it's like, okay, you know, I'll just uh, go into fast zero and do a shut and a no shut. And, you know, then all of a sudden you happen to see or realize, hey, I'm not getting my console messages. This is one of those scenarios I was telling you about at the beginning of this video. Because again, people say, oh, I don't really know why I'm getting it. This isn't the only reason, but at the console port, it means someone has turned off console logging. So we just need to turn it back on again. We'll just go up. This is the first thing you should do. Don't make the solution complicated. Just see if no logging console is there and or just put in logging console and you're all set. Let me show you show logging one more time. And you see console logging there in the middle, level debugging. I wanted to show you what it looks like when it's disabled. Always go to show logging first. If you're not seeing the messages you expect to see, always, always, always do not waste time with anything else. And by golly, if you see disabled right here, that's why. So again, just go conf t, login console, we trust, we verify, show logging, and you'll notice now the message did come up right after I put in show logging. We saw the system message there, and your console logging is back on. So nothing complicated here. You, like I said, be familiar with the numeric levels. That's a good idea, and we'll work with those a little bit more in the future. But coming up next, actually, I know we're hitting 12 minutes here. I'm going to give you a quick short video coming up next, and we're going to work with this console logging a little bit more and then we'll head on to the syslog server from there.